It's a curiosity I think we're exploring on this show. It's like what characterizes this time of life and why can it be so uniquely painful and yet we always remember it with such, mm-hmm. I mean, like syrupy, sweet nostalgia, even though we often at the time is like all you wanted was to just get on with it, you know? And looking at today's world, I mean, you know, with social media, it's like, it must be so confusing if you're a teenager. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It must be so uh-huh. confusing yeah, totally. because we are look, you know, especially middle school, high school, you're already looking at your peers for acceptance and you're looking at them for guidance and you're afraid, like you said, to sort of own your own truth because you feel like you're going to be backed into a corner, you're going to be, you know, cast out, you're going to be, and now you've got this sort of social media thing which must be so confusing for people because how often it conflicts with how they really feel and yet they're at war with feeling like they can express how they really feel because they're going to be attacked by the masses or someone saying that this is what's trendy now or this is what's the right thing now. And and it's like, I, I think, it, it, you know, I feel like we don't, it's going to get a little sad when I say this, I think, but I, I get a little sad. I get a little worried. Like, consumerism and and America, you know, capitalizes so much on this particular age group for so many things, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's such a... They're preyed on, basically. So if you're a teenager and you're listening to this, like I would say, like, count yourself and and give yourself more credit here. Like, everyone's after you in some way. Like, yeah, like to yeah. sell you something, to take over what you want. Cause you're passionate, you're, you're young enough at that point where you're going like, I feel this, I feel this. And then tomorrow you might feel differently. And then it's emotions and you're going up and down, you're trying to understand what they are. And then like, you've got all these things kind of trying to capitalize on that. And that makes me kind of sad. Cause it's like, I, I mean, you know, if you think about having kids one day, you want to you want to be able to like steer them the right way. And, and when mm-hmm. they get to that age group, you, you fear that it's like, oh my God, they're going to have to just, you know, navigate over these hoops that, that society's throwing at them nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. That really, ask, do you oh, feel, oh, sorry, go, go well, ahead, I would no. say that really resonates, Sebastian. I'm, I'm really grateful that you shared that perspective. I was just thinking yesterday, I, I like finally got on TikTok. I haven't had it for all this time. And I was like, you know, scrolling, whatever. And I just felt really sad. Like, mm-hmm. I was just thinking about all the stimulation. Like, there, I feel like in our society, there's no longer space for stillness. It's like stimulus, stimulus, stimulus. And young people themselves are like now the product. Like, they they have become, they sometimes commodify themselves. I think not knowing that that's what's happening. And, you know, these platforms sell your data to other companies. So, like, you're literally, you are the commodity. Like, you are the product that's being sold and there's like 12 year olds on these platforms anyway long long rant but i was feeling and really sad a word yesterday from our sponsor <laughs> tiktok <laughs> <laughs> yeah um by the way i just i don't say this as like a weird weird like attention to myself but i i did turn 40 like last week and and it's Happy interesting birthday. congratulations like, you know i was no, actually one, you. when you when you mentioned 911 I, I was like damn how 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 old's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no no, no. 40 and, and so so it's like it's interesting when you're 40 you start to kind of like you know you, you you i mean it's like all the way the last couple of years you, you just the bullshit really starts to kind of drain out mm. and and mm. and you go and you're like now i kind of get to sort of start over in a lot of ways mm, or you yeah. say that to yourself or so it's interesting what you're saying because I, I one of the things I said to myself I was like you know I basically have limited now I maybe open Instagram like once twice a week at this point wow. and I'm like that close from pretty mm-hmm. much but I but I don't want you know there's so many there's a couple you know relationships there with certain kind of charities and things that I've like nurtured over the years that I would not want to sort of give up on but mm-hmm. it's a lot on what you're saying I. I don't even know what that application does for me anymore. Like I'm, I, I mean, you know, it might. I think it brings attention. I think. I think the point was, you know, bringing attention to certain 
voices and certain kind of, you know, whether it's charities or certain kind of purposes that don't get the same attention. And for that, I'll stay on. Like, I'll, mm. I'll, I'll, I'll try and figure out a way to kind of like, you know, partner there and to keep, keep making it for that. But outside of that, like, you're right. Like, I, I don't have TikTok, but, you know, I open the thing and, and I don't even recognize like what I'm seeing. I, yeah. I made a distinct <laughs> choice to follow. So odd. You know, it's like I, I constantly go like, "Where's the good and the bad, and how mm -hmm. much does it, you know, weigh the other?" And and yeah. again, the only thing that 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 still keeps me in that game, so to speak, is is wanting to find a way to like kind of connect with somebody that really is trying to say something because there's so yeah. much noise and there's so much bravado yeah. without any initiative and and everyone yeah. wow. loves to just be a backseat driver and tell you like their thoughts but they're like not doing anything to change anything it's that's just so true yeah you know it's the easiest and and the only and that's the only fear i have is like where it comes to like sort of like the teenage mind you know it's just they people have to be really careful. I just read somewhere that there was these lawsuits, like because there's the suicide rate and there's all these things like parents are afraid of, and mm -hmm. I, and I don't, I, I'm not surprised because I I don't think these companies are really factoring any of that in. No, I mean we know they're not. We know that they're not. We know they're not. We know that their their profit is their motive. Like it's yeah. not even that's an objective truth yeah, that we have to so just contend with. Oh, no, was. you're right about Instagram. <laughs> it, it, I think that's that's a gripe that a lot of people have is like they follow specific people and they're not being shown mm. those people. And so mm -hmm. what's the point? I 100% agree with you. I think that's actually a really big problem that, that has been talked about a lot to the creators of Instagram or the, the heads of Instagram. And they and, just they just don't want to hear it because they want to sell you my stuff. Last, my last <laughs> beef, beef with TikTok is this. I was like a friend of ours, Will Malnati and I, we were doing well, videos. Naughty. <laughs> yeah, we were doing videos two years ago or whatever before TikTok that were called One Minute Man. And uh, anyway, we never got any credit for that. <laughs> Wait, I'm I'm glad we're gonna we're gonna start a campaign themselves. to bring it back, Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian is the OG TikTok. I do wanna no. I do wanna just like the one thing that I do think is positive about TikTok, about social media, is that it does feel like people who who have stories to tell, people who have talent, cre actual creative talent, whether it's like visual art, whether it's storytelling through videos, whether it's, I don't know, mixed media. I do feel like now there there is opportunity for them to share those stories with a wider audience, which I think is really special. I think the amount of roadblocks that there were that there have been in the past to get into like the industry, to be able to work with a production company, to be able to share those stories. Oh, yeah. are, I think that's one thing that's positive to me is that more and more people, everyday people get to share stories. And I love listening to those stories. And, and, and by the way, I, there, I agree with you. I mean, I don't know. Cause you were in LA, right? Penn. But like, for example, in those years when like we were starting out, like I was in New York and I was have to send tapes and I talked to a few people today about it, like who are actors like coming up. And I was like, oh my God, like if only we had had a YouTube mm -hmm. or something where you could just like put your, you could film something and put it on there and it would yeah, get sending a you tape know, used seen to be that a... same way. Yeah. It was a hassle. It was insane to mm -hmm. send a tape to get noticed that way. So I, yeah, listen, I totally agree with you. Like, yeah. That's the good of yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm all for like harnessing that, you know, but it's like, it seems yeah. like we're in a world where we love to just crank up like the negative yeah. ways to use that. Well, that, like, that's, no, that, let's that, that's just focus that's on capitalism. The I mean, that's because what you're talking about, like what Sophie's highlighting and what you're highlighting is like, this is just the innate capacity of human beings using technology to bring more and right. more instantaneous forms of communication across great distances. That's that there's nothing yes. but positive implications there. It's that it's happening within the framework of capitalism, which yeah. literally places profit above any other. It's the only priority. And it's not that even any one individual has to have that motive. It's that that's the, that's the system within which we work. And therefore, know. you know, I'm not saying that good people can do work and it's all for, for nothing, but, but it's, 
you know, the, the, the framing and the system really does need to change. And of course, that's what, that's what, that's what people all over the world are talking about. And mm. yeah. communities all over yeah. the world are figuring out. But yeah, I mean, I think the thing about social media is that it is, it's a little bit like, um, ah, the, the tough thing about it is that these giant platforms, they're now just so, they, they, they're, they're fully within the clause of, of capitalism mm-hmm. and it's sort mm-hmm. of like this profit driven death spiral. So so these platforms which even just 5 years ago but especially like 10 years ago there was so much more I don't know like variation and diversity of like expression. I feel like now, mm-hmm. you know, the yeah. irony is that memes, memes are almost like the freest form of communication on social media. You know, it's like mm-hmm. even though there's something universal about that brand of humor, memes are like I feel like memes are, are are humans always finding ways to retain their humanity within like a <laughs> a sort of mental prison. I think I and it's maybe yeah. a bit of, it's a bit of a hot take, but I'll go ahead and say it. <laughs> well, no, I, was, but I, I I think I know what you mean. I was just thinking so, about. I think I know what I mean as well. <laughs> I definitely don't. Yeah. So wanna, Sebastian, maybe really? you can break it down. We, we, we can spend me. more time on this just after. No, let's you know. move on. It's reminding me of last night. We have a house guest right now, and she grew up in Australia, or she grew up in Iran, and then moved to Australia when she was like a preteen um, as a refugee. And she was telling me that she watched this one movie over and over again because it's about this Italian girl who moved to Australia, and that was the closest thing for her like it's a com- it's a completely different experience but it was the closest thing for her to her own experience it's the, it was the first piece of media she had seen where there was a girl who was not from Australia um, trying to navigate being in Australia and I was just thinking like how how sad that that's the only piece of media that you had and still how much mm. of an impact it had on her um, and how today I do think there are more and more stories for young people that reflect their own niche experiences. You know, like there is a a Muslim girl wearing a hijab on TikTok who's hilarious telling her story. You know, there's many of them telling their stories and there are many yeah. more opportunities for people to connect with those stories, no matter how niche their experience is. You know, they don't have to be white. They don't have to be uh, straight. They don't have to be whatever, li- list all the, you know the majority groups but yeah i think that's that's something that is really special that we we can't miss out on Mm -hmm. you know i think also not not that i need to have the final word but probably we should move on but i do just want to say one thing i think like the the way that people use it like part of the ways that people use it can be really positive the challenge is that the platforms are based on an addiction model i mean that's like studied proven Mm. but I, i think i've probably even mentioned this on a previous episode but I think maybe yeah. it got edited out so I can say it again. There was like a week where... Um, we'll edit it out again, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll just keep cutting this this tidbit. There was like a week where Instagram, which is owned by Meta, Facebook, had um, they had like received the results of a long, a long longitudinal study mm. of the impacts of the platform on young people. And it was basically, I don't remember the exact details, so we'll have to fact check this, but it was like if young people spent more than an hour or two hours a day, it had very real consequences on their mental health. It like it was proven that it was damaging. And that same week, Instagram had an internal mandate to try to keep young people on the platform for like three hours a day. And so like they knew that that would cause mental health issues and they were like losing young people to TikTok. So they had an internal mandate to like, how do we keep them on longer? So uh, to me, that's evil. That's just like plain evil. Like you have the information and you're doing something really evil with it because you need money, you know? And so it's an addiction model. It's a profit model. Need money. Want. You want money. Want money. Yeah. So there are wonderful things happening on the platform, and the creators of the platform are making you addicted. Yes, yes. I'm glad to that. I think think as long as we're aware, you know, it's like that's all. I think we can – we just have to keep being aware of all the pros and cons and kind of like make – be able to make decisions from that. Like maybe that's – you know, especially like you're talking about these teenage years. Like they're so – incredible in a way and i actually feel like when you're a teenager you don't get to enjoy them right because you're mm. too stressed trying to kind of yeah, that's true. take in mm-hmm. you know you're getting narratives you're seeing stories someone's yeah. saying this is cool this is that and and, I, and and it's like this wonderful time deep down where you get to really find out about yourself and what you want what you like and i just i guess that's that's the end of the 
the the goal is 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 you know hopefully these you know kids can learn to keep doing that without and 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 still just like you know kind of stay cautious like if you mm-hmm. feel like an instinct is not you know completely landing like it's okay like you don't have to always agree with everything it's just mm. it's so anyway but yeah. We didn't Sebastian, have what this is, growing up, Penn. No, I mean, well, wait, what do you mean we didn't have this? Have what? Have which aspects? We didn't have, we didn't grow up with social media. We didn't have, oh, yeah, 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 you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I really, you know, my stepson is 13 and, and I'm, I just, yeah, I just, I'm just very conscious of it. And, you know, it's, it's interesting being a parent of someone that age because I think, that inherent sweetness that you were talking about a second ago and we've kind of been touching on, there is there is this beautiful plasticity to, well, just chemically there's a plasticity to the brain. And, and, then, and then I just think like you know, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, there, there's, a, there's, there's a plasticity and a resilience that somehow also characterizes this period where it, it can be so tough, but you almost like don't have anything else to compare it to. So you're just kind of like, you're in the trenches of it, you're in the weeds of it, the aspects of it that are hard. And you kind of just like get by better than maybe adults would be faring with that level of, I don't know, like volatility, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, like yeah, it's, you- I, I, I see kids that age as being quite brave. And as you said before, we, by the way, uh, the, the background here on Nava and Sophie. Sophie uh, used to be a fifth grade teacher. Nava used to be a middle school director and then also worked at the UN researching the effects of media on youth as one aspect of her work. Um, so that's, 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 that's part of why they're, they're here um, so that I'm not that's just great. rambling about um, <laughs> no, a bunch of great. nonsense. <laughs> but, you know, uh, th- this, this time, it's like they, there is kind of a target on their their chests and their minds, you know, like, and, and I, I say that because it's like, it's, it's, you know, you were saying before, if anybody this age is, is listening to this, it's, it's a, it's a time that requires courage and just being is courageous being, wow. I'm going to say something like being yourself is courageous, but it actually, I mean, it is, it is. And social media is such a, in, in a, a further invitation to conform to some other sense. I mean, we were talking a second ago about what it feels like to be, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 30 years old in an audition. You know, you, I feel like you're taken right back there. You're taken right back to feeling like, oh, I'm not enough. I need to be more like that, dude. You know, it's like living inside way, a social media room. To, to go back to uh, what was said earlier, let me tell you, if I had a, I, I booked more jobs off of tapes than I did in, in the room. Did you really? So if I'd had, if I'd had YouTube, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, like, maybe so your there you career go. Like, would have taken just, off. If you had YouTube, maybe you, maybe you would be like starring in Marvel franchises. Maybe you would be like the best and Emmy nominated. And you'd be like starring yeah. alongside Julianne Moore <laughs> yeah. and one thing. And this, it, you really would have a career, well, man. 